Hey guys, what's up? This is Tim, back again with another video. It's been a long time since I recorded any tutorials. Uh, it's mostly that I really don't didn't have any ideas for tutorials. <laughs> um, I, I just, I don't wanna, usually don't really wanna create tutorials on subjects that I think a lot of people have already covered. Um, this is probably a video that's on a subject that a lot of people have already covered, but um, I just wanna talk about some details that I haven't really seen in some of the bullet rigid uh, tutorials mainly how to deal with concave type of uh, collisions because that's something I struggled with in the past uh, I just want to go through how to deal with something like that it's fairly straightforward it's um, just but I think it will be useful uh, for some people who might know already how bullet works but have dealt with some collision issues like with concave type of stuff and don't know how to speed that uh, or how to get that working without starting to use starting to use concave collisions in bullet because concave collisions in bullets are super slow and there's there's ways around um around that to not have to use concave collisions um so let's dive uh let's dive right into that so over here i have this um, object which is just a box with some holes in it um, and obviously if I'm gonna shatter this which I'm gonna do now just with the shelf tools so now I'm shattering it and if I do an exploded view then this is what I'm gonna get so let's drop this to the floor let's uh, move it up a little bit And let's just use the shelf tools to drop it down. So let's do a ground plane and go to the rigid body tab and do RBD packed object. So, so what we're gonna get is some falling geometry. And first glance, this looks quite okay. But let's look at the collision geometry for this. So let's look in uh, in this and show the collision geometry so as you can see Houdini is trying to make um, convex geometry from this because uh, this this the standard what is being set to you can set geometry representation to a lot of different things you can set it to boxes you can set it to uh, spheres so like if we would drop it like this then it would behave quite weirdly as you can see um, but convex is the is the is the general and that's that's what bullet is, is is fast with the problem comes in when we because for something shaped like this we need it to be concave let's put it to concave and if i'm gonna press play now you can see even though this is are really simple shapes this is extremely slow um so you're either gonna have a very slow sim or you're gonna lack precision because I mean and right now you're not really seeing a lot of problems but you can imagine uh, that in some situations where your where your simulation needs to look a little bit more precise and like close up like for, for a far away building collapsing this might not be a problem and if you're like gonna be really close up on something uh, this might be a problem and you can of course also use like regular rigid uh, which are pre more precise um, and of course you're also still need need to have concave collisions for that but it'll it'll be a lot slower so let's let me show you how um, what's a workaround to for this so let's dive into our object and let's move this out of the way and let's do a for each named primitive. There we go. We're gonna get 10, 10 pieces. Let's put it to single pass. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fracture this one again. So let's do a Voronoi fracture. Uh, Voronoi fracture. Uh, let's just copy these things here. No, not gonna copy that. Gonna copy these things here. And let's fracture it. 
so now I'm gonna do an exploded view we have this piece which is fractured again and from these pieces, pieces you can create convex hulls because in general this is not concave anymore uh, perhaps we could do a little bit less pieces maybe like six this looks like it should be fine maybe maybe even less maybe five five looks good problem is if we're gonna throw this in our rigid body sim so let's do that and then turn off single pass and then let's go over here this is not gonna work because the names are completely messed up and then bullet doesn't understand what's going on and bullet needs to know um, even though we sub fractured everything this still needs to be treated as the same piece um, so how can we do that well if we're gonna click on this and go to primitives and you can see it's getting extra piece names which we don't want we what we want is to drop down an attribute copy and copy over our name and as you can see right now it's gonna keep piece zero everywhere and let's uncheck this and do a exploded view and then it will show us our regular pieces again and then when we go into the bullet sim it'll drop perfectly fine and let's uh, go into our visualize thing and then what we need to do is inst uh, like instead of have keeping it like this we need to do create convex hole per set of connected primitives so as you can see what it does now is for um, it'll it'll create a convex hole for each of those extra pieces that we generated so if I'm gonna drop this now you can see it'll still drop because the names of these primitives they like they have the same name so they will they'll be treated as being the same object so this way we can create convex um, so let me unhide that you can create concave type of collisions without it being super slow obviously it's a little bit slower than um, than just regular um, like without doing the subfracture thing but it's it's very minimal obviously that's like where we're not gonna see that much of a difference probably with only these few pieces but I can maybe try to show you so let's disable this now let's enable it and I mean it's still uh, probably not probably a little bit slower but it's not too bad um, we can however in some cases it can this can can be can be a little bit slower um, because let's let's visualize our guide geometry again over here it's not that noticeable but in some cases your um, collisions might interpenetrate each other in the beginning so and then bullet has to resolve the collisions um, um, that are penetrating and it will ignore it and it will probably run fine it will just be slower so what you can do to avoid stuff like this is in these in this for each loop here put a primitive sub let's go uh, back to here and then what we can do is we can do transformations and let's let's show that for each loop and let's scale down everything Point eight, point eight, point eight. So now we have maybe, maybe even smaller. Point seven, point seven, point seven. So now we have fractured pieces that are not really colliding from the get-go. And if I'm gonna go to my bullet sim again, they are still, they still share the same names. So it'll, it'll, it'll behave like as we as we intend now let's uh
The only problem, obviously, is that it looks well weird the way it is right now. But what we can do is we can go over here and let's uh, just load our points. So now it just has the points with uh, transformations. And this is also a lot faster to cache. Um, like if you're gonna cache a bullet simulation, like look at this, this is gonna be 51 kilobytes per frame, and then I'm gonna do the create points, and it's gonna be 18, so uh, less than half. Uh, obviously for a simulation this small, that's not really a big of a deal, but if you have like a big building collapsing, then that's obviously gonna be a lot slower. Um, what we can do is put down a transform pieces, and what do we want to do? We want to transform this geometry, so our original geometry, this one. We want to uh, have um, have a rest point lattice. Oh, time shift. So rest points. Uh, we can just create a rest with a time shift. So this will be the rest position, and then we want to transform with the position. So. And then what we're gonna get, what we're, what it's gonna do is it's gonna transform the input geometry with a transformation of the um, of the uh, uh, simulated geometry. So let's just put an output here. So then what we have is our regular geometry having proper concave collisions. Um, without ender penetrations inside the simulation obviously the the transforming it down is going to be a little bit less precise but it'll it'll make it faster in like uh, in a lot of cases obviously you have to determine for your use case if that's going to be beneficial but um now we have con concave collisions uh, without the without it being as slow as being concave collisions so Something like this also uh, comes in handy when like colliding with some more complex uh, like bigger objects like terrains or something like for a normal terrain type like just uh, like a mountainy terrain or something you could uh, just use the regular terrain collision object but if I'm gonna try that on something like this um, let's maybe also transform it a little bit more so it'll fall Inter more interesting but if I'm gonna try to do this with the terrain objects uh, I'm not sure why this is still here but right um, and let's check what this will look like so let's check the guide geometry and this won't work obviously so let's put it to concave And you can see we're getting some weird stuff where it's 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 falling through through these things over here, even though it shouldn't, because we're using con concave collisions right now, um, which is kind of weird to be honest, right? Okay, so you can use the same technique here. So let's do a for an eye fracture. So offset. make a volume out of it let's scatter some points in here turn off relax maybe a little bit faster and let's fracture this entire thing so let's do a exploded view and we're gonna get this and this is not gonna be still not gonna be useful for creating convex type of stuff let's up the point count Uh, this is looking better. I think you could. This this looks like convex type of um, type of geometry. All right. So let's remove a previous terrain object from there, and let's add this with being a RBD packed object. So it'll be added as an app active object. And let's instead of having it be an active object, let's create it as make it a static object. And then let's show the guide geometry, and you can see now we're getting these all these nights of uh, convex type of uh, type of holes. 
and let's display geometry and let's see what this does. So it's it's a little bit slower, but as you can see right now, I I am getting proper collisions. It does do a, something a little bit weird, I think, in the beginning. But in general, they're not flying through it. At least, obviously, you can tweak that with some precision. So even for something like this, like right now, I'm just using convex holes with with bullet, um, but it's just it's being treated as being uh, as being separate objects. They're just not being animated. So I'm getting more precise collisions of this than with my concave thing. Um, so, so for something like that, it's also useful. Of course, you it depends on what you're gonna what you're gonna use it for, um, but like it, like when you when you're gonna do collisions don't think of something like this as okay this needs to be one object you can just fracture it up make it multiple objects to create better collisions um, it depends on the scenario but uh, I found often that like fracturing stuff up to create collision geometry is is better than having something big and then concave um, so i think that's about it uh wraps it up for like this lesson hopefully this was uh somewhat useful it's 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 probably a, it's it's a little bit less of a uh uh yeah what like normally i i do these tutorials of um like personal projects that i did and then I do like a breakdown of it but i thought this 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 would be interesting because this is something i've run into uh like in the beginning a lot so Hopefully, uh, hopefully this was useful, and uh, if you'd like to see more of like these sort of more, I guess, less artistic, more just tip tips kind of tutorials, if you like that, just like let me know. Um, so uh, yeah, until next time, bye.